Hello, we're here today from the Kentucky Valley Educational Co-op in the Holler Studio to show you some information about banking and using integers. I'm Stephanie Kidd and I'm Vonda Adams. Okay, so first of all what we're going to start with is some vocabulary words that we need to know. The first one that we have here is integers. Integers are whole numbers, either positive or negative, and include zero. Positive numbers are numbers that are greater than zero. And negative numbers are numbers that are less than zero. Now, also since we're talking about banking today, we're going to talk about withdrawals. Withdrawals is the effort of withdrawing money or taking money out of the bank. And a deposit is money that we put in the bank through a check or whether we take money to the bank and we deposit it in. Now, zero pairs are very important when we're talking about integers. Zero pairs is when we have a positive number and we have a negative number. In this case, this is what they're going to represent, a positive one and a negative one. And when they get together, guess what happens? It's zero. They are no, we go right back to zero. If we show that on a number line, a positive one, a negative one, put those together, we're back at zero. We only have zero. So we want to talk about those today too. So Vonda's going to walk us through a couple of different things. Okay, so first of all we want to talk about uh, zero pairs. And let's talk about, let's look at a little demonstration about why that is. It's not just because your teacher tells you it is, is there's a reason for it. So let's talk about, first of all we have this uh, balance and we're going to build a positive 2 and then I'm going to put a negative 2 on this side and you can see that they will balance each other out okay now if I read when we're talking about uh, zero pairs that means we have to take for every positive we have to take a negative to form that zero pair so notice what happens when I take both of them at the same time we're staying balanced Okay. Now if I take one of them though, look what happens. We're no longer balanced. So we have to make sure that we remove both of them or we take both of them, pair them up together to equal that zero. Okay. So it's important to understand that whenever we're working with integers. So let's look at a few examples of adding and subtracting with integers before we get into actually talking about how we would apply this to our uh, banking account. So, first of all, let's look at building, uh, let's say we have 10, and let's pretend that these are $10, all right? So we're going to build out our $10. And typically we use black or a dark blue, uh, dark blue or something to represent our positive numbers, and a red to represent our negative numbers. So you've got $10 in your banking account and you want to buy something that costs five dollars right so you uh, buy something that costs five dollars so that means that we're going to remove five of those dollars one two three four and five and that leaves us with our five dollars so i still have five dollars in the bank is that correct yes that's correct you've got okay. five dollars in the bank now you forgot though that you had you had written a check and somebody hadn't depo had hadn't deposited it yet and you wrote that check for ten dollars. Uh oh. Now what's gonna happen? Do you have ten dollars in your account? No, you've only got the five. Okay, right. so here's what's gonna have to happen. We're gonna have to make zero pairs in order to and even to be up for the bank to even be able to take out the ten dollars. So let's look at what happens here. When we create those zero pairs, remember it's with a positive and a negative. Now, you have those $10. So the bank can remove the $10 from your account, but, uh-oh, look what's happened. Now, how much money do you have in your account, Stephanie? I am $5 short. Short. Sometimes we call it in the red 
Sometimes it's in the hole. Either way, you didn't have enough money. I owe the bank that money now. Yes, you do. Now, not only do you not have any money, you owe the bank some money. And because sometimes don't they charge you more? Oh, they do. Yeah, banks will. If you if you go over, if you, I mean, if you don't have enough money in your account, then they will charge you a penalty for that. So it's very important to keep track of what you're spending. Okay? Then you go out and you do a little odd job and you get $10. And so you're going to put those $10 back into your account. Okay? So we're going to add these $10 back into our account. So we've got our ten dollars back. Hold on, you said I owe five dollars. Yep, they're going to take it. So here's what they're going to do: the bank's going to take because you had that negative. They're going to take this one out. They're going to take this dollar out. They're going to take this dollar out. They're going to remove this dollar, and they're going to remove this dollar. So now. Because you owe five dollars, you don't have ten dollars anymore. You now have only five five dollars. Okay, so it's very very important that we keep track of the amount of money that's in our account and the checks that we're writing and knowing that they they may not go and go to the bank and deposit them immediately. So you have to keep track of what you've written out of your account and deduct it immediately, whether it comes out or not. Okay, so let's look at one more demonstration how we can look at that. For example, we could have our $10, and we can remove $5, and we have those $5. Then we can have that check come in. Remember, it was for 10. Aww. Yep, so now we're going to have to zero out, zero those pairs. And leaves us in the red again. I noticed something really important. What's you that? did each one of those individually, like you pulled a red and a white together. Yes, those are called what we call remember zero pairs. Zero pairs. In order to cancel out a negative, we have to have a positive. Okay. Then remember we got that check that came in when it worked, and we had ten dollars to deposit, so that goes in. But we still have this to take to deal with. So again, we're creating those zero pairs. For every dollar we owe, the bank will take a dollar. And that leaves us with our five dollars. Okay, so let's really think about our banking account. And Stephanie's going to talk to you about that. Okay, but before I do, because you may not have these at home or you may not have those in your classroom to use, let's talk about how we can do this on our paper if we need that help. Alright. So, let's do some drawings first. So, let's say that I know I have $7, but I know that's in the bank. I have $7 in the bank. So, that's in the bank. It's good. It's going to be a positive number. So, I can just draw those as each dollar being positive. Or I can just make it a color, it doesn't matter. So here's my seven dollars. Now I know that I am going to spend three of those. So I'm going to be taking away three. I can just go ahead and mark those out and I would have my four dollars left, right? Just like this. And that would be four dollars. But let's say that this is negative um, eight. Okay, if I've got seven dollars and I need to spend eight dollars, do I have eight dollars to spend? I'll put these three back. Nope, you don't have enough. I don't have enough. So what's going to happen? So let's say I spend those eight dollars. I'm going to create that down here. I'm going to create eight dollars down here. And I'm spending them so if it's eight dollars and I'm spending them, I'm going to put a negative here. One more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can zero pair. Marking this one out. 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 And this one. What happens here? I don't see a partner. 
I don't have a partner. I just have a negative one. So actually, I am one dollar in debt. Let's do one more real quick. Let's say the number is negative five plus six. Okay? So I'm going to draw my negative five. Each one of those are negatives. And I'm going to draw my positive six because it says I'm adding six. So let's do that. I think Miss Wanda's going to do that over there. Yeah, let's just look at what she's actually drawing. So this is plus six. Now, I'm going to zero pair, as she said. I'm going to zero pair of these. So this one's gone, and this one's gone, this one's gone, this one's gone, because that's a zero and that's a zero. What am I left with? Only a positive one. So I can write that one, or I can write that positive one. Okay. You're going to get some information here in just a little bit about a bank account and how to actually write that onto a um, bank check statement uh, balance sheet. Mm -hmm. So when you get that, I want you to walk through it and then you're going to have some questions at the end. Our next thing we're going to do is how to use integers on a check balance sheet. Well, we're going to start out with the amount of money of $75. We're going to put that beside a deposit up here in the right hand corner. So let's look at putting the right hand corner. There we go. Now, my next thing is we went to Dairy Queen to use the debit card of $12 on March 3rd. So I'm going to look at my next line of my transaction there. And I know that, that it was a debit card, so I'm going to put in debit of and the date was March 3rd. My transaction was to Dairy Queen. And now I have to determine if I have spent this money or is it a deposit. So I spent this money at Dairy Queen, so it is going to be a negative number. I'm going to write that in red in this case. In the withdrawal section for $12. Now... I have to take that amount away from my deposited amount of $75, and that leaves me $63. Next, I went to Walmart for some essentials. That was $20 on March 6th. So another, uh, another debit card purchase, March 6th at Walmart, and now again, if this was using my debit card, it's coming out of my bank account. It is another negative number of $20, and that leaves me with $43 because I'm taking that away. Now, I got a check for helping my neighbor in their garden, and she paid me $30. So, and that was on March 6th. So, March 6th, I worked for Miss Pam, a check from Pam. Now, in this case, Pam gives me a check, which means it is going in my bank account, and that's a positive number of $30, so I'm putting that in the deposit. I add that to my balance, and I get $73. Now, on March 9th, I have another debit purchase, and you'll see I just put a D there, so I know I used my debit card. Um... And I bought something online. So I bought it from, on March 9th. And I bought this from Amazon. And it was a shirt, of course, for $17. So if I bought this, I used my debit card. Again, it's coming out of my account. So that's going to be $17 negative. So again, in red for me. And I wanted to take that away from my $73. And I'm going to have $56. Now, how much money do I have left in my checking account? $56. Now, I did the withdrawals in red. Many times with your checking account or your just your bank uh, check balance sheet, you're just going to use one colored pen, and you'll know that your withdrawals are always your negative numbers, 
and your deposits are your positive numbers. I want you to keep that in mind. Now you're going to do some work now and I want you to create a small ledger for yourself and determine what amounts would be either positive or negative for the next couple of slides. Now, when you're looking at these amounts, think positive or negative, I want you to write them down because you're gonna to have to answer some questions about that at the end. So keep in mind, write these down. I'm gonna give you plenty of time. You can pause it at the end so you can make sure you get everything down. And then you can take the quiz. So let's look at our next slide and remember, Pause it at the end if you need to, to get all the amounts down, but let's look at it. Now, first thing is I've saved up $100 to start my checking account. Now keep that in mind. If you saved it up, what does that mean? Now I saved up $100, but then I went to McDonald's and I used my debit card for $5. I got paid for mowing the grass for $25. I used the debit card at Walmart for $25. Now think about the difference between I got paid $25 and I used my debit card for $25. Grandma wrote me a check for my birthday for $50. And last, I went to the movies and that was $10. I want you to think about how much money you started with, how much money you've used, how much money you got paid, and how much money you would have at the end of all of this. So those are some questions that you're going to get next to be able to answer. So take some time, write these down, and so you'll be able to answer the questions successfully.